MMA is a pretty crazy sport, full of high stakes and tension. And with that being the case, it's only natural that things get a little zany from time to time. And these are 20 of the most ridiculous moments you'll ever see in mixed martial arts. And what better way to kick things off than with perhaps the single most awkward post-fight interview of all time? We'll set the scene. Gray Maynard had just managed to TKO Rob Emerson with a slam that seemed to cause major pain to his opponent's ribs. The problem? Well, Maynard himself was KO'd by the slam as well. And when Joe Rogan took him to one side for the post-fight interview, the clearly concussed lightweight did not for one second accept the fact that he had went out. Joe being Joe, he decided to make things extra awkward by forcing the very confused Maynard to watch the slam back, talking him through his self-knockout stage by stage. Yikes. Take a look at this. Look at the replay, bro. Bro, look at the replay. You picked him up, watch the dump, bang. You hit your head down, now watch this, you're out. Watch He's this. Done right he, he is done, but now so are you. Now You're I'm unconscious. Now I Look at you roll over. You're completely unconscious. My arms your eyes. I understand, but your eyes were rolled back in your head. You were out cold. What was it? But what about this all time great mismatch? Where the credentialed boxing legend James Tony decided to trash talk the entire sport of mixed martial arts, calling it a joke and promising that he would beat any active MMA fighter on the planet. Funnily enough, Dana White accepted that challenge, and Tony was absolutely ragdolled by Randy Couture on live TV for our viewing pleasure. One of the weirdest MMA fights of all time. But not all ridiculous moments need to be drawn out. No, this otherwise uninteresting matchup between Smilin' Sam Alvey and Dylan Andrews was made legendary by some random crowd member's decision to shout instructions at the fighters. And as soon as he did, the whole arena erupted in laughter, along with the two athletes themselves. Things like this just never seem to happen these days. He did, and it's looking like uh, it's looking like Andrews has done his research as well. I've, I've, I've missed something, Dan, but the crowd are really getting involved here, and both fighters responding. Diego Sanchez is a true one of a kind a totally intense character who was known for his wildly entertaining fighting style. And when his chin eventually dropped off, he was still revered by the sports fan base for his years of service, even if his interviews got weirder and weirder. And when he walked to the cage to face Jake Ellenberger with a crucifix in his hand, it was just about as determined a fighter walkout we had ever seen. A very peculiar character, but a hero to all fight fans. From one fighting hero to another, it's kinda crazy just how long Alistair Overeem managed to extend his career. And his bout with Stipe Miocic at UFC 203 showcased the Reem using every tactic at his disposal to get the win. This included blatantly running away from the heavyweight champ, and after getting KO'd in yet another all-time awkward post-fight interview, he tried to claim that Stipe had tapped to a half-locked in guillotine earlier in the round. Once again, Rogan decided to make a fool out of this clearly confused fighter, walking him through the submission sequence on live TV. You just can't script this stuff. Thoughts on what happened? I believe when I punched him, when he went down, I followed him, I got him in a guillotine choke, and I cleared himself to tap. The ref didn't see it, the ref didn't jump in, so the fight continued. But in my opinion, he tapped, and um, it's a bummer. Yes, the referee didn't, uh, didn't come in, so, but he clearly tapped. Well, let's take a look at it. We'll have the truck pull it, and let's look at the big screen. You grabbed a hold of the guillotine, you held on strong. Speaking of totally unscripted moments of MMA hilarity, we gotta just let Derek Lewis take the stage next. Lewis had just pulled off the comeback of a lifetime, KOing Alexander Volkov with just 13 seconds on the clock. And when the time came to take the mic, what followed was complete and utter perfection. How can you even describe this total masterpiece of a post-fight interview? I'm here with the winner, Derek Lewis. Derek, why'd you take your pants off? It was, my balls was hot. I understand. I need to sit my black ass down and do some more cardio. Fuck what you talking about right now. I ain't trying to fight for no title right now. I have no gas tank like that. She. Thanks for having me. Hey, maybe next week or sometime or two weeks from now, I'm gonna come on your show and smoke some weed with you. Anytime, sir. Anytime. 
But for every post-fight interview that hits, you have something like what happened to Paul Buontello. Calling on his fans to repeat his seemingly famous catchphrase, this heavyweight contender was left with, well, no fans to answer him. A true tragedy inside the cage. All right, I want to say one thing. See if I got some fans out here. You ready? Here we go. Don't fear me. Come on, baby. Hey, you know, don't fear me, fear the consequences, baby. On the long list of elite level mismatches in UFC history, none came more bizarre than Anderson Silva's total drubbing of Stephen Bonner. Not only did Silva show absolutely no fear in the face of Bonner's striking skills, but he actually stood in front of the fighting icon and basically told him to try his best. And as soon as it became clear that Bonner had nothing for him, the spider put him away with a brutal KO like it was nothing. Mike Perry is another man who was known for brutal KOs and a genuinely tough attitude. But when he tried to walk out to the theme tune from the Halo video game franchise and the UFC accidentally put on Halo by Beyonce, he decided to go with it. And the results were totally hilarious. Went off a pretty disciplined win, DC, I thought, over Mickey Gall in June inside this very building. What the I showed that he has a well-rounded well skill set. Hey, somebody said that this was interesting music by Mike Perry in my ear. And Mike goes, what is this song? They put on the wrong song. But Mike, look at him. He just kind of rolls with it, right? That's Mike Perry for you. Just kind of rolls with the punches. I mean, Mike Perry picked it maybe. I don't know what happened. He picked this song. He picked the song. Did he? He forgot. I mean, he forgot he picked it. <laughs> There's nothing stronger than a parent's love for their kid, but in this case, we're guessing that Chris Weidman would have been happier without it. After losing his middleweight title by brutal TKO at the hands of a very dominant Luke Rockhold, Weidman's morale must have been at an all-time low. Pushed to give an interview post-fight, Weidman did what he could to assure his fans that he would be back. But just as it seemed like the interview was over, his father, Ray Weidman, grabbed the microphone and made the most ill-fitting declaration of love for his son. Look, the sentiment was kind of beautiful, but the execution was absolutely atrocious. Thank you much, sir. And everybody, thank you! And this is still my boy! And how could we ever make a list of all-time ridiculous MMA moments and not include the infamous ice spill? The concept was simple. Two UFC champions in Jose Aldo and Hernan Barao were serving as cornermen to their teammate Ronis Torres when one of them accidentally spilled a bucket of ice on the octagon floor. Cue a clearly outraged Joe Rogan and one of the most hilarious outbursts we have ever seen on the commentary desk. And looking back on it now, it seems as though he doesn't even know that it is Aldo and Barao he's speaking to. Right there. I've never seen you so excited. Well, I don't want anybody to fall and break their head. This is yeah, ridiculous. I'm looking at what? ice on the ground. Oh, the less time we spend on this one, the better. Fighting is a very physical sport, and sometimes the mind is pushing in one way and the body is pushing in another. And for Justine Kish, getting beaten by Felice Herrig was only the beginning of her problems. As it turned out, Kish had left it all in the octagon that night, including something a little extra on the canvas. Yeah, this one is just flat out disgusting. There's no other way to put it. Greg Hardy was a pretty controversial figure for the entirety of the time he spent in the UFC. Some of this was down to his past problems outside of the sport. But he did actually make his transition. His grasp on the rule set left us with some truly bizarre moments in the cage. Chief among these was the time that Hardy somehow thought it was okay for him to use an inhaler in between rounds. Like, seriously, he actually thought that was legal. Thankfully, he was punished and the fight's result was changed. But man, that's one crazy oversight to make. Back in the early days of the UFC, you actually had the choice to wear wrestling shoes if you so desired. But the one drawback to this was that you weren't allowed to kick for obvious reasons. Well, this absolutely genius fighter somehow missed the memo on that, and despite being warned repeatedly against kicking his opponent, he just kept doing it and doing it, until the fight was eventually waved off. 
an all-time great low fight IQ moment. Quentin Rampage Jackson has better comedic timing than some professional comedians, and when he returned to the UFC and took on Fabio Maldonado, his total inability to pronounce the Brazilian's name was just too hilarious to leave out of this video. Considering that he spent months training for this fight too, it's just baffling that he never got around to learning how to say it. Mabababo, how you say his name? Fabio Maldonado. Fabio Mabababo. When a fighter doesn't want to engage, good luck trying to make them fight. And for Nate Quarry, the only thing he could actually do to make this final minute of his bout with Caleb Starnes interesting for the fans was to openly mock him. And yeah, the UFC cut this dude from the roster as quick as can be in the post-fight. Who knows what Peter Yan was thinking when he decided to throw away a comfortable lead in a championship fight and knee Aljamain Sterling in the face when he was clearly grounded. Sure, it was a solid strike, but Jan lost the fight. He lost the belt, and he lost the respect of many fans for his troubles. A totally baffling mid-fight decision. And finally, we come to one of the craziest and most blatantly disrespectful things the UFC has ever done. John Jones failed a pre-fight drug test in the lead-up to UFC 232, causing the Nevada State Athletic Commission to step in and attempt to pull him. With their primary attraction in danger of falling off the bill, the UFC instead decided to move the entire event to California six days before it was set to happen. This messed with the travel plans of so many fans, but obviously the UFC didn't care, and Jones very smugly shot down any attempts from journalists to, you know, do actual journalism. And you thought UFC 294's fight week was crazy. Sit down. I'm sitting down. Well, I want to Thank take you. the mic from her. Better questions. Better I journalism. I don't, I don't understand what your question is. What, is there what, a what's the reason? Better journalism. Better journalism. Better journalism. You suck. Better journalism. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let her talk. What, what, what's the question? What's the reason for John Jones having a picogram in his body? I don't know. We, we, yeah. That's been the topic of That's this why entire. I'm yeah, well, you, you, you get, I, I told you, like I told. You. And we're coming out of the gates with one of the most insane incidents you will ever see in an MMA cage. Takeo Shina had just managed to score a fantastic knockout victory, but instead of wheeling off in celebration following this huge moment, he decided that he wasn't done fighting. Shina, for whatever reason, just kept hammering punches down on his opponent. And when the ref tried to jump in there and stop him, he was met by a huge knee to his midsection. Eventually, Shina was restrained and this skirmish was brought to an end. But man, you're not likely to see an uglier post-fight scene in this sport. Thankfully, Shina never competed in MMA again, and to be fair, what commission would ever license this guy after a display like that? The veteran referee Mark Goddard has a habit of finding himself in situations like this, who knows why, but this won't be his only appearance in this video. Ahmed al-Darmaki had seemingly done enough to register a highly impressive submission win, but for some reason he didn't let go of the sub when Goddard tried to loosen his grip. And then, to make matters worse, he started pushing the ref in frustration. Goddard, to his credit, kept his cool, despite being twice the size of Aldarmaki and probably capable of squishing him if he so desired. But in the end, this unruly fighter had his win overturned to a DQ loss for getting physical with the ref, and we certainly agree that it was the right call. This next one is a little different. This guy did not mean to land a shot on this referee and drop him to the canvas. But hey, if you're gonna KO a ref, you might as well do it in style. And for this amateur fighter competing at the IMMAFs, oh, he managed to land no, a rolling thunder kick ref. that caught this ref clean. Sure, it would have been nicer if it actually landed on his intended target, but this guy managed to carve out his own unique slice of MMA history with this one. You got a feel for the referee, though. That's definitely a concussion right there. But for as much as the last one was accidental, there was nothing unplanned about this next one. No, this tense scene kicked off directly after this fight had ended. And who knows what exactly caused these two to clash. But this fighter clearly took issue with the referee. And before anyone knew what was happening, they had nearly started a full-on brawl. But this ref wasn't backing down and was not intimidated by the pro fighter that stood before him. 
Not all refs are equal in terms of fighting prowess, but this guy was certainly better than most. We're dealing with a wide range of incidents here. The intentional ref attacks, the not-so-intentional ones. But how about the semi-conscious submission attempt? Well, this guy got flattened within the opening 10 seconds of his fight, eating a front kick to the face before a barrage of punches put him down. But in his dazed and confused state, he came back to life and tried to score a submission on the only thing he could grab a hold of, the referee. Thankfully, his team made a beeline towards him to try and prevent any unwanted chaos. And we're sure the ref himself took it in good spirits. These things happen in MMA, I guess. When you're forced to sign on the dotted line and fight someone you're friendly with outside the cage, it's not an easy thing to do. And for Justin Gagey, we're sure there were dozens of fighters he would have rather competed against than his friend Donald Cerrone. So when Gagey managed to score the TKO in the first round and was made to land a few more ground and pound shots than he would have liked, he let out his frustration towards the ref, lashing out at him for what he perceived to be a late stoppage. The highlight is one of the most passionate warriors in the sport, and to say he wears his heart on his sleeve would be putting it lightly. Another classic concussed fighter moment up next, this time with a leg lock attempt that could have done serious damage to the ref's limbs had he not tapped out and saved himself. You got a feel for this fighter though. No one wants to go viral for something they did in a confused state. But damn, his opponent didn't even try to help the ref. He just stood there taunting both of them. A bizarre fight ending sequence and proof that these referees really do need to have some BJJ skill in their arsenal. This next one was a legitimately emotional reaction, and while you should never strike a referee, at the same time, you can kind of see why this fighter was so angry. Who knows what this ref was thinking, but he was watching a very basic and easy to understand BJJ sequence playing out. Seriously, there was nothing complicated about it. This guy had his opponent's back, and once he sunk in that rear naked choke, the tap came shortly after. But for some bizarre reason, the ref ignored this very clear tap and let the dude hang out in the choke for another few seconds until the fighter applying the sub mercifully let go. When the losing fighter got to his feet, he immediately went after the ref for putting him in such danger. Again, we're not condoning violence against fight officials, but man, what was he thinking? Another case of taking on a friend inside the cage and the type of emotions that can bring to the surface. For Roy Nelson, a man who was without question one of the hardest punchers in MMA history, he knew full well what the consequences could be for every additional punch he landed on Antonio Bigfoot Silva. As a friend of Silva's, he was pretty upset that the ref, Big John McCarthy, failed to realize that the fight was over. A puncher like Big Country Nelson delivers insane force with every single hammer blow. And so, by the time the TKO came, it was a late one in Nelson's eyes. In his rage, he kicked out at the ref in anger, although he did later apologize for his actions. I can't, I can't apologize not enough to John McCarthy, the commission, and the MMA fans around the world. John Fitch, during his prime, had one hell of a top game. So much so that many fans consider his style of fighting boring. But when he was in a dominant position, he was very hard to get off you. So you could probably understand the referee's concern when Fitch tried and succeeded in wrestling him to the ground just seconds after eating a nuclear bomb punch from the rock fist of Johnny Hendricks in the opening round. Fitch was out of it and immediately tried to put his wrestling skills to use against the only thing he could get a hold of. Unfortunately, his intended target, Big Rig Hendricks, was already off celebrating this massive victory. When a clearly concussed and extremely disoriented fighter is swinging punches at a referee, it's helpful when that referee just so happens to be a former UFC-level fighter. And sure enough, this dude came out throwing bombs at Frank the Tank Camacho during this regional-level event, and thankfully, Camacho was able to very calmly deal with the situation, showcasing his pro-level defense. He didn't take it to heart either, showing total understanding to the fighter once he had calmed himself down. That's the sign of a great referee, folks. 
Not all refs bring Camacho's proven resume to the table, but the more ex-fighters we see officiating fights, the better. This one was the biggest news in combat sports for a time. During the peak of Conor McGregor's very public fall from grace following his fight with Floyd Mayweather, he attended a Bellator event in his hometown of Dublin, Ireland. And after witnessing his longtime friend and teammate Charlie Ward scoring a huge KO in front of a packed three arena, Conor totally abandoned all sense, hopping over the side of the cage immediately to congratulate Ward on his win. The problem? Well, Mark Goddard wasn't finished tending to the beaten fighter, and usually the ref takes a few seconds before anyone is allowed in. So when this longtime referee called out Connor for his lack of professionalism, McGregor went over and actually shoved Goddard. As you might expect, the Irishman was ejected from the venue, and on that Sunday morning, Dana White was no doubt furious that his biggest star had drawn so much attention to Bellator. We've shown some decent referee submission defense in this video so far, but how about the takedown defense from this official? After one of these fighters got put out thanks to this choke, the ref was forced to defend against a single leg from this confused fighter, balancing on one leg like a prime Jose Aldo to avoid conceding the takedown. Like many of the other clips we featured, this was not an intentional attack at all. But hey, it's not often a ref gets to show off their skills. And finally, we've come to maybe the most famous example of them all, the ill-fated trip to Finland that saw one of MMA's dirtiest fighters, Gilbert Ivel, lose control inside the cage. According to Ivel, he was brought in to lose this fight, set up with an opponent who had ties to the promoter and the referee. And after being unfairly cautioned against working in the clinch by the ref, which makes zero sense, Ivel snapped and knocked the ref out. This was one of the most infamous moments in MMA history, one that made sure the name Gilbert Ivel would be remembered long after he stopped fighting. Was it right for Ivel to be brought in to lose like this? No, definitely not. But his reaction was totally insane. There's no denying it. Number 12, Majid Suleimanov. Majid Suleimanov, a four foot tall dwarf and a social media star, competed in a hugely outlandish and controversial Epic Fight Championship event against the female porn star Alexander Puskin, with the Russian promotion once more fielding another freak show. The contest, which featured some of the worst strikes you've ever seen, only lasted two rounds and had plenty of laughs from the commentary booth. The result did eventually come through and Soleimanov was declared the winner after a load of absurdity. Number 11 Unknown Fighters This has never ever been seen before, or at least by us. Stunts in MMA are all the rage, but the stunts just keep getting odder. This time a Polish promotion staged a bout between two fighters without arms. The fight seemed functional otherwise, but this kind of disability created some interesting results. Both fighters utilized many sidekicks and low kicks till the fighter in the black and red shorts would try a spinning back kick, but he would lose his balance and fall to the ground. Not much else happened other than the fighter in the blue being given the decision win. Number 10 Blindfolded Fight The Epic Fighting Championship is known for organizing the most bizarre fights ever seen, but this is something we've never seen before. The Epic Fighting Championship took it up a notch or two. By blindfolding all the participants at various stages of the bout, a blindfolded pair began the opening round aggressively, attacking each other while the other fighters stood back. The referee struggled to break up the chaos and once receiving a punch to the back, all four were left bloody by the brutal encounter, and the winner was... I mean, honestly, who cares? Number 9... I don't know what to call this. This fight shocked the MMA community after throwing a bizarre bout in which a 75 year old senior citizen and his grandson fought a female fighter and got their butts handed to them. The pace picked up in the second period after the woman, Mishko, dropped each of her opponents within the opening seconds, clearly undaunted by the double team. Mishko had dropped the two family members, 
a staggering three times and rocked them countless on others, while seemingly sustaining no damage in return. Despite the one size shell lacking, the contest was bafflingly ruled a draw. Number 8, Alexander Garabedian. One armed MMA fighter, Alexander Garabedian, took on two opponents at once, managing to knock out one on his way to winning the fight. The fight started and Garabedian walked straight towards Lexus, landing a body kick followed by a perfect head kick, then dropped him. Lexus got back to his feet but was on shaky legs, with the cage side doctor eventually entering the cage and declaring he was out of the fight just after four seconds. Alexander wasn't able to knock out the remaining fighter like he did to Lexus, but he cruised his way to a decision win by mixing up his kicks and right hand throughout the second two minute period. Number 7 Unknown Fighters Association of Future Boxing Champions staged an event between wheelchair bound opponents. The event was held at a sports gymnasium in Brazil. The disabled MMA practitioners tried to square off against one another in MMA gloves. Once one of the participants was dislodged from the the chair the ref had to step in and help him reset position we actually don't know who the winner was and if anybody got seriously injured regardless we applaud the spirits of the two warriors and wish them the best number six piotrick mawboy while this lady's bulging biceps might have given the impression she would be able to overpower her well-groomed opponent the opposite proved to be the case as mawboy won by tko <laughs> Widać, że tutaj to jest zupełnie niewytrenowane i Ula powinna po prostu bardziej uważać, no bo ta różnica zasięgu jest spora teraz. She charged low at her opponent, but he was ready for it, throwing his opponent to the floor and pinning her down. At first, the female fighter tried to fight back by punching the top of his head, but that just seemed to rile him up and he responded by putting his knee on her torso and punched her hard in the face. The referee was quick to stop the fight, but that didn't stop people online from slamming the organizers of the event for allowing it to even happen in the first place, and rightfully so. Number 5. Alexei Belyaev Blogger Alexei Belyaev, 27, took on Vladislav Psycho. This event saw Belyaev fighting Psycho, despite there being a huge weight difference between both fighters. <laughs> What? Belyaev attempted to submit his opponent with a chokehold before one of Popov's trainers jumped into the cage and pulled Belyaev off his fighter. As the pair were separated by the referee, Popov swung an opportunistic punch at Belyaev, which caused the bigger man to collapse to the floor in exaggerated fashion. Belyaev would get his revenge in the second round, finishing the fight with a series of punches after taking his opponent to the ground for a second time. Eventually, Popov's corner would throw in the gloves. Number 4, Alexandra Stepakova. Fans were in dismay on social media once again after footage emerged of a 530 pound giant taking on the much tinier Alexandra Stepakova. 200 kg против 50 kg. В одно время против 4 Степакови там. 4, 4 там. Баба, что? The petite strawweight was even saved by a member of the crowd during the second round who managed to somehow get into the cage and kick the bigger man in the back. When the bout resumed, Stepakova but Kova was able to steer clear of him for the rest of the round, although she did ship a few crisp shots at distance. After this dumb three-round encounter, the judges scored it in favor of the larger Grigory Chistyakov. Number 3, Ben Rothwell. This fight made no sense at all. <laughs> This is actually UFC fighter Ben Rothwell facing off against a Make-A-Wish kid, but this meetup didn't go the way it should have. This fight was back in 1996, and it all happened due to Ben's opponent pulling out of the bout last minute. Regardless of what his opponent looked like, Ben didn't take it easy at all as he would land rabid punches and even a knee to the back of the kid's spine. The kid had a lot of guts to step in with Ben in his amateur fight, and would eventually be his only fight of his amateur career. The kid has guts though. Number 2, Katie Castro. Besides looking like a mom you'd see in a Black Friday video fighting over a toaster, Katie also had other interests. Are you ready? Are you
Castro immediately looked out of her depth when she appeared in gym attire. Castro faced Elima Le McFarlane, who won via technical KO just 10 seconds into the fight. In the aftermath of the bout, the California State Athletic Commission launched an investigation into Explode Fight Series unsanctioned MMA events. Number 1. Connor Knight This disgraced bout took place at Evolution of Combat 9 in Scotland in September of 2021. Prospect Aaron Leo or Blake Griffin's brother wasted no time in picking up a win, securing a victory over a young journeyman who was just 21 years old. Knight got floored during the evasion and Leo easily got on top of him and delivered a barrage of punches. The referee then halted the fight and Leo came out as the winner. The fight ended in less than 15 seconds. Number 12 Felice Herrig Both of these women went straight Nate Diaz. Oh, now a little tough. Oh. The two fought out a close encounter that was interrupted at times by the two strawweights flipping each other off mid-fight. Watch as Casey wipes blood off her nose, throws at a Herrig, and proceeds to give her opponent the double bird. Casey went on to lose the fight via a split decision. After the fight, Herrick said there were no hard feelings despite the heated confrontation in the cage. Number 11, Nate Diaz. He's got to look out for that right leg. If Nate Diaz gets that right leg over, he's got it. He's got it down. down. For a round and a half, Kurt Pellegrino did exactly what people thought he would do. He used his wrestling to stay on top of Diaz and ground and pound, flowed with Nate's attempts to get out of bad positions, and kept putting the Ultimate Fighter Season 5 winner in trouble. Pellegrino then went for a slam in the second round and found himself tangled in Diaz's legs. Not only did Diaz have the triangle choke locked on, but he also found some time to flex and flip a pair of middle fingers to the sky while his opponent was tapping out. Number 10 Max Holloway he points out the DC. He's even listening to the commentary team. The best boxer you see, baby. After landing a clean straight right, Holloway pointed at commentator and UFC legend Daniel Cormier octagon side before slipping a cater counter and screaming that he was the best boxer in the UFC. Holloway then followed up with a crisp jab while evading a flurry of cater strikes before repeating his claim again. The Hawaii native opened proceedings for the UFC with one of the best displays ever seen in the octagon on that Saturday night, beating number 5 ranked Calvin Cater from pillar to post to cement his title credentials after his controversial loss to Alex Volkanovsky prior. Number 9 Conor McGregor Over the rules, protect yourself at all times, follow my instructions. We're gonna have a clean fight, touch gloves and let's do this. When referee Herb Dean asked Conor McGregor and Dennis Seaver to touch gloves before the fight, the Dubliner extended his hand, but the German wasn't feeling it. So McGregor flipped the bird before the fight, and then Seaver got his sh rocked a couple minutes later. At the post-fight press conference, the Irishman explained why he made the gesture, saying that it was due to Seaver's use of steroids in the past. It was not just aimed at his direct opponent, though. It was also for another fighter in his weight class, Ricardo Lamas. Number 8, Anderson Silva. Griffin has huge heart, though. Look at Silva. I mean, that's just amazing. Oh, again. Again. How far is Griffin? Silva juked in jive like Neo from the Matrix in one of the most spectacular performances by a fighter in any combat sport. It was as if Silva had a GPS for Griffin's punches planted in his brain. Silva stood merely inches away, and Griffin, a former light heavyweight contender at the time, only managed to catch air when putting together combinations on the feet. After dropping Griffin a couple of times, Silva ended the former champ's misery quickly in the first round with one last magician act and a deadly accurate jab while moving backwards, and his hands dropped. Immediately after the fight, Griffin got up and jetted back to the locker room, refusing to take part in any of the post-fight ceremonies. Number 7, Habib Nurmagomedov. Both fighters entered the fight with tensions at a high after a strenuous buildup that saw a bus attack at UFC 223 Media Day used as the main driver in promoting the fight. Nurmagomedov, as he had done in previous fights, began talking to McGregor during the fight and requested that they talk now as he rained down punches on the top of the former two-weight world champion. But it didn't end there. Khabib took flight when he jumped out of the cage and attacked McGregor's teammates after this fight and the Russian said at his post-fight press conference that McGregor had crossed lines during the promotion of the fight, a point to which McGregor seemed to reference during the fight by saying it was only business. Number 6 Dominic Reyes Oh man. 
Here's a good rule for fighters, don't talk sh** to your opponent when it leaves you open for an immediate counter, or nod like a douche. At the time, undefeated Dominic Reyes tagged Powell with the left hand and Powell decided to shake his head at his opponent saying no. The problem is, he kept his hands a little too low and was within striking range. Reyes then threw a high kick and slumped Powell. Jordan went to bed immediately face down and any MMA canvas is anything but a posturepedic mattress. But the savage moment was Reyes nodding back after he knocked his opponent out cold. Number 5 Jorge Masvidal Any chance they get? The fight clock is brought to you by Mojo. Oh! As the bell rang to start the fight, Masvidal charged towards Askren and executed the perfect flying knee KO, immediately knocking out his opponent. He then delivered a number of deserved punches to a clearly unconscious Askren before the referee managed to call off the fight. Afterwards, the Cuban-American mocked Askren being knocked out, flopping to the canvas and flailing around, all while his opponent was still lying unconscious next to him. Number 4, Nick Diaz. Ending written all over it. Wow, I just never expected this. I never expected to see him slap by Diaz. Oh, oh my. And he Lawler was highly touted as the next best thing at welterweight, possessing devastating KO power and ruthless aggression. But Diaz shocked the world when he started egging on and taunting Lawler in the octagon, with the jiu-jitsu black belt urging the latter to stand and trade. Diaz won the fight via second round KO, and aside from being freaked out by Lawler before the fight, admits that he used his trash shock to spook his opponents out, or specifically Robbie. You can't hate on it if it worked. Number 3 Hamza Chimaev Oh nice job by Chimaev Oh my goodness He's talking to David Oh my goodness Within 3 minutes and 16 seconds of the first round, Chimaev had ended the fight like he has ended all of his MMA matches to date in a conclusive, brutal fashion. Chimaev made it a point to yell at Dana White during the fight. He picked up Lee Jingliang and brought him over to White and slammed him down in front of him before he choked him out. The move brought a lot of attention to Chimaev and helped reinforce his dominance inside the cage. The welterweight contender looked like he never missed a beat. Number 2 Cody Garbrandt is there anything more demoralizing than your opponent dancing while knocking you out? Probably not. I mean, he stopped Takeya Mitsugaki in the first round, his rematch fight, swarmed him, look at this. The two went back and forth exchanging shots and words throughout the fight, but Garbrandt went the extra mile in his attempt to mock and toy with Cruz throughout the fight. He took the extra moments in between action to show off his dance moves to his opponent before knocking him down numerous times. Garbrandt had a few opportunities to finish off Cruz during the match, but his showboating ended up getting the best of him at the moments. However, Garbrandt got the last lap and accomplished exactly what he wanted as he became the new UFC Bantamweight champion of the world. Number 1 Pyotr Jan if your opponent's Russian, just don't talk trash during the fight to him. Just, just don't do it. Not necessarily talking trash, but Uriah Faber took the initiative to show his tongue to Jan and would get two punches in the face in return. As Faber had fallen back against the cage, Jan had his arms out calling him out. This has to be one of the most savage moments because of how easy he made it look right after. The fight wouldn't end there, but it was still pretty dominant till the Russian would end the bout with a front kick to Faber's butt chin. MMA is still a fledging sport, but for as long as there have been people who have made a living fighting, there have been stupid moves committed by those who do. Throughout the history of any sport, there are legendary moments embedded that will burn brightly in the memories of fans. Despite MMA's short history, there are plenty of these moments, but for each one of these, there's one that isn't so glorious or legendary and is kind of absurd or even outright stupid. Over the years, we have seen fighters act in certain ways or do something questionable during their bout that made you as the audience sit there and wonder. For this video, we have compiled the list of instances where fighters decided to do something really dumb that cost them the fight or their health, or people in the MMA world that did something dumb. So without further ado, these are the dumbest moments in MMA. Number 12 UFC Cameraman Cole Miller went viral when he staged a mock lightsaber battle with Jim Allers during the UFC on Fox weigh-ins, but one cameraman obviously didn't see the footage. The next day, as Miller walked to the octagon, the cameraman completely ignored him and focused instead on his brother Micah. With both brothers heavily decked out in similar gear, the mistake was understandable, but surely he should have seen the gloves Miller was wearing. Number 11 Drew Chapman Imagine your opponent managed to knock himself out during the fight and you still somehow ended up losing. 
Well, that is exactly what happened to Drew Chapman at LFA 36. All he had to do was walk away after the referee had called the fight. With his opponent Irvin Zayala unconscious and lying face down, Chapman celebrated the victory by doing a front flip off Ayala's back. His win was quickly overturned into a disqualification because he struck his opponent after the bell. Number 10 Steve Matsugati Steve Matsugati is arguably the best MMA referee that has ever existed. Wait, I read that wrong. What I meant to say was, ah, you get the point. One of his notable moments was when Josh Berkman faced John Fitch at World Series of Fighting 3. Oh, he should have had him in the full guard. It still might pull it up. He's out. That He's out. is it. Oh! Josh Berkman locked up a tight guillotine that would choke Fitch unconscious in the main event, sending the MMA world into a state of shock on the night of June 14th. Dana White did not once hesitate to voice his opinion on what the referee should have done. He goes limp and he's out. He rolls him over, lets his head flop to the thing and then stands up over him. He's literally like this standing up over him before Mazzagati even gets in the picture. Number 9 Heath Herring's Kiss Japanese fighter Yoshihiro Nakao knows all about tough love thanks to former heavyweight Heath Herring. The quirky Nakao made the mistake of kissing the American mixed martial arts fighter smack on the lips during the traditional stare down before their December 31st, 2005 bout in Osaka, Japan. Enfin, on verra bien ce qui va se passer. Oula! Et Nakao qui. Oh! Oula! Oh! <laughs> As the referee gave both fighters final instructions in the middle of the ring, Herring paused and then nailed Nakao with a short right to the chin. The Japanese fighter was carted out of the ring on a stretcher. I don't think I really need to go into depth as to why this gesture from Nakao is pretty dumb. Number 8 Kevin Randleman Kevin Randleman knocking himself out before a heavyweight championship fight. That would probably be one of the ones when I uh, was told, hey, we got a problem in the back and I go back there and Kevin had been knocked out. Apparently, Randleman was getting ready in the back and slipped on a pipe which led to him cracking his head and injuring his shoulder. Needless to say, this also postponed the fight as Randleman was in no shape to be in the main event. But regardless, have to give credit where credit is due, he was a hell of a fighter. Rest in peace, big man. Number 7 Joe's son carries a cross. Having a great walkout is every fighter's dream, but is there such thing as going overboard? Well, Joe's son and his teammate Kimo Leopoldo didn't believe so. Nothing says preparing for a fight like carrying a heavy wooden cross all the way from the tunnel to the foot of the octagon. This wouldn't help Joe one bit due to numerous nut shots landing on the fighter's crotch. Kimo and Joe claimed that their mission was to spread the word of God and that they were religious men. This was later proved to be a false claim since Joe's son was eventually convicted of rape. For all of these reasons, this moment was pretty dumb. Number 6 Dave Gardner Greets Japan Greeting Japan was a wonderful gesture by David Gardner. He just shouldn't have done it while in the middle of a fight. Hello, Japan! Oh! oh. No. Said something. Oh, he is in trouble. Oh, you Going see? for the rear leg. No, this is over. Aoki's got it. Not Especially with the BJJ expert like Shinya Aoki on his back and half locked in for a choke. All it took was Gardner one second to wave to the Japanese audience and take his focus off the fight that he was in and that was it. Number 5 Aguilantani Speaking of taking the focus off the fight, Aguilantani made the same mistake of lowering his guard when he had given up his back to Yushin Okami before he was able to quickly snatch in a rear naked choke. Oh! oh no. Wow! Oh, 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 concentration! Luckily for him, the choke was not in too tight to where he was able to slip out of it in the first round. Regardless, escaping out of the choke did not save him one bit. Yes, he lasted the full 15 minutes of the fight, but in the end he would find himself short on the referee's scorecard thus causing him to lose the fight. Number 4 Piotr Jan Controversy struck out at UFC 259 in the bantamweight title fight between Piotr Jan and Aljamain Sterling when Jan blasted a down Sterling in the face with an illegal knee, ending the fight and earning himself a disqualification. Look at him just pressing on the head here. That stop! Oh, that's illegal. Tore. His knee was down. Though Jan took most of the heat of executing the knee, it was his cornerman that told him to do it. 
A lot of MMA fans saw this as dumb because Jan had pretty much won the fight and decided to risk it all with the knee and we all saw the aftermath of this mistake. Number 3 Betch Kohea Betch Kohea paid the price for asking Holly Holm to come at her. Holm knocked out Kohea on that Saturday night at UFC Fight Night Singapore with a dramatically vicious kick to the head and subsequent blows. Whereas Betch Kohea is new to this sport, she's a new athlete, so she's constantly learning, adding new things to work at- oh! The fatal sequence came moments after Kohea taunted Holm in the third round of their women's bantamweight bout. Kohea decided it would be a good idea to taunt Holm while standing directly in front of her, so Holm taught her opponent a lesson the hard way. I mean, this is the same girl that knocked Ronda Rousey out with a kick. How did it ever seem like this was a smart thing to do? Number 2 Conor McGregor Besides his questionable antics outside of the fighting world, Conor definitely showcased himself as a highly skilled fighter with a great IQ inside the cage. Which made it even more surprising that he attempted to take down Nate Diaz in their first bout at UFC 196. And Conor! Look out! Look, look out for, for the, the take down! The guillotine! Diaz trying to finish with a he's got, got the him back! Flattened out. That's it! He's got the chance! Nate Diaz! Though he was already tired out in the second round of their matchup, it didn't help that he attempted a double leg takedown with arguably one of the best jujitsu fighters the UFC has ever seen. It should have been no surprise that that was how the fight was going to end, especially with a tired Conor McGregor attempting to take Nate Diaz down to the mat. Number 1 Johan Segas It goes without saying, whilst a little showboating in a fight can be okay, you probably shouldn't stop to dance in the middle of your fight. Have to follow it up. Again with the jab. Oh! And then this always sinks. And that's, ex that's exactly what Joe Harding did at BC MMA 16 when he faced Johan Sagas with Sagas knocking his opponent out in ridiculous circumstances. Here is the exact moment Harding screwed up when he took his eyes off Segas and Segas very quickly seized the opportunity to knock him the f out. Though this was extremely satisfying to watch, it was an even dumber gesture for Joe Harding to full out become Michael Jackson during the bout. Sean Strickland was the perfect stepping stone to a title shot for Poitain, the only fighter at 185 pounds who would never try to wrestle him. And sure enough, instead of doing the smart thing and testing his novice level ground game, Strickland instead tried to strike with the former world champion kickboxer and quickly got KO'd because of it. It's crazy how one moment can change the course of an entire career. And for Chris Weidman, while KOing Anderson Silva was one such moment, another unfortunately came when he decided to throw a spinning back kick against Luke Rockhold. Things were going pretty well for Weidman up to that point, but this mistake allowed Rockhold to get the takedown and eventually unload a career-altering amount of damage to steal away his title with a very late and brutal TKO. Call this low fight IQ or just low IQ if you want, but every fighter should know not to blow your nose if it's broken. If you do, it will cause your eye to swell up, hindering your ability to see punches coming. And, well... Donald seemed to miss that memo, making this one of the most infamous examples of a fighter messing up their chances of winning by basically getting a doctor stoppage defeat that was entirely of their own making. Lando Venata is clearly a talented fighter, but if he had stuck to his guns and displayed a little bit more maturity in there with Tony Ferguson, he might have shocked the world. As a short-notice debutante tasked with taking on the number three ranked guy in the world, Lando dropped Tony multiple times in round one, almost finished El Kukui. But then, the total savage in him took over and he proceeded to put his hands down and dive headfirst into a war with Ferguson before Tony latched onto a Darce choke and got the tap. This is one of Ferguson's favorite chokes here. Derek Brunson is a much more polished fighter these days, but there was once a time when he would empty his gas tank in round one to try and get the finish. On one such occasion, he took on a rising Robert Whittaker and proceeded to show absolutely zero regard for his own chin, running into a huge shot from Bobby Knuckles before losing a fight that he was actually doing pretty well in. You know you've made a bad choice when your own corner are captured live on camera criticizing your decision making. And for Michael Johnson, who knows? Maybe he genuinely believed that he could sub Khabib Nurmagomedov with a guillotine. 
But why on earth would an intelligent fighter ever think that? Or at least one with Johnson's skills. A truly dismal attempt at shocking the world. This next one deserves a place on the Mount Rushmore of stupid mid-fight decisions. David Gardner was taking on the icon Shinya Aoki, a superb Japanese submission specialist who was regarded as one of the best 155-pound fighters of his era. But when Aoki managed to take his back, Gardner was cool, calm, and collected. In fact, he was so untroubled by this BJJ expert's skills that he took a moment to smile and wave at the camera, shouting, Hello Japan, to those watching. And yeah, that's where his problems began. Aoki saw the opening, took his neck, forced the tap, and gave MMA one of its earliest viral moments. Okay, so this one is a legendary moment for many different reasons. And yes, Minotaro Nogueira had every reason to be confident in his ability to score a guillotine choke on the clearly concussed Frank Mir. But Big Nog, you already did the hard work, Mir was clearly hurt. You could have just TKO'd him and got the win. But no, Nogueira wanted to prove without any doubt that he, and he alone, was the greatest BJJ specialist at heavyweight. Unfortunately, his guillotine attempt gave Mir the split second he needed to reverse position, end up on top, and eventually break Minotaro's arm with a Kimura. An all-time great finish, but one that could have been easily avoided. Sean O'Malley had just broken his leg after a dominant performance against Andre Sukamta, and despite his strong showing in the opening two rounds, he was in major trouble. Unfortunately, his opponent didn't seem to notice, and even as O'Malley stood in there hopping on one leg in front of him, Andre still shot in for the takedown winding down the clock and eventually losing the fight on the scorecard. Jiri Prohatska vs. Glover Teixeira is one of the wildest fights of all time, but man, these two guys made some huge errors in this fight. And for Glover, he hurt Jiri on more than one occasion and somehow managed to immediately mess it up. The first time, he landed a massive shot on Prohatska and then tried jumping into a guillotine despite being exhausted. The second, he hurt him even worse, and then for some reason went for a takedown. Again, an instant classic, but some of the worst fight IQ you will ever see. Peter Jan holds the distinction of being the first fighter in UFC history to ever lose a belt by way of DQ, and he did so in a fight he was winning in a low-pressure situation where it was obvious that Aljamain Sterling was a grounded opponent. Just let that sink in. This dude had it all, and he threw it away in the most remarkable fashion you could ever imagine. Speaking of throwing it all away, Chael Sonnen had some insane momentum behind him as he rolled into his rematch with Anderson Silva. Not only did he manage to shock the world by dominating the champion over five rounds, despite losing by a late submission, but most fans agreed that Anderson's skill set was just not a good fit to deal with someone like Sonnen. And during round one of their second fight, it looked like Chael was getting it right. Or at least it did until the second round, when, for some bizarre reason, he decided to lazily throw a spinning backfist at the greatest striker in UFC history. Anderson immediately capitalized on this and easily TKO'd Chael to put their rivalry to bed. If you're fighting a striker like Steven Wonderboy Thompson and you have the wrestling to trouble him, maybe it would be wise to avoid the stand-up as much as possible. But no, Kevin Holland decided that his own pride was more important, and so he vowed to keep it on the feet with the kickboxer. Unfortunately, all this led to was him taking a ridiculous amount of damage over five rounds. You can call this bad fight IQ, but there's also some general stupidity creeping in. Five foot nine Kelvin Gastelum shouldn't be able to stun the six foot two kickboxer Israel Adesanya with a head kick, and yet that's exactly what happened when they fought. But despite having such a huge moment, Kelvin's mind was fixated on getting the takedown instead of following through for the TKO. And his ill advised takedown effort gave Izzy just enough time to gather himself and eventually turn the tide for a win. Andre Arlovsky was doing a fantastic job at stifling Fedor Emelianenko during the early stages of their fight. His speed and distance control was giving Fedor some real problems in there. 
But then, out of nowhere, Arlovsky ruined all of his good work by deciding to try his own flying knee. Instead of it landing, though, Emelianenko anticipated it perfectly and KO'd him mid-air with a huge overhand punch. Daniel Cormier is a world-class wrestler, a guy who made the Olympic team before eventually carving out a reputation as one of MMA's finest practitioners. Anthony Rumble Johnson, on the other hand, is a knockout artist and a formidable one at that. But despite hurting DC on the feet during their fight, Rumble, in a bizarre changeup, decided to employ a wrestle-heavy approach against Cormier, eventually gassing himself out and submitting to a rear naked choke. Seriously, the late Anthony Johnson was an awesome fighter, but to this day, we cannot understand what he was trying to do here. Cody Garbrandt gets a lot of criticism for having a bad chin, but in our opinion, it's his terrible fight IQ and awful striking defense that are the real killer combination, and despite putting on one of the most technically masterful displays of stand-up ability we had ever seen in a dominant showing against Dominic Cruz, Cody just reverted to caveman-level striking from there onwards. And when he fought Pedro Munoz, he somehow got himself KO'd for just being a total wild man when there was zero reason to be. A very strange career. And finally, we gotta give some love and some fierce criticism to Nate Diaz here. He was getting dominated by Leon Edwards for 24 minutes up until he landed the perfect shot and rocked the future champion. And while, yes, he knew that he had the moral victory in that moment, we like to think there's a parallel universe out there where Nate didn't totally let Leon off the hook by taunting and pointing at him, and instead went all out for the finish. Number 12, Patrick Likas. Patrick let his elbow fly like crazy with no remorse for his opponent at all. Nice right, very good. Just dips oh, on the belly. Wow. This deadly elbow knockout occurred at KSW 65 in December of 2021 and actually looked like it killed his opponent. It all started when Piotrick was trying to chase and wail at his opponent and forgot that counters existed. Patrick used this to his advantage by throwing an insane spinning elbow that landed picture perfect on his opponent. The elbow threw his opponent to the ground with total ease, as if Thanos had just snapped his fingers. This elbow flatlined the fighter on the receiving end while medical personnel would go take care of him. I mean, the dude looked like he just straight up died. Number 11, Ricardo Hamos. Man, this elbow had Danny thinking his opponent was somewhere else besides in front of him. At Capo, the style. Ricardo Hamos put his opponent away with a classy spinning elbow that was enough to short circuit his opponent, Danny Chavez. After this would land, Danny would be out on his feet and squared up facing Casper the Ghost, besides looking at Ricardo. And just for good measure, the Brazilian would land a straight left that would have Chavez sitting down. Danny was left on the floor flailing his arms around referee Mike Beltran as he would come in and cuddle the down fighter. Number 10, Molly McCann. Molly landed this KO elbow to send her opponent Luana Carolina to wherever the hell Ngannou sent over him. For the fight, you, you used it on the walkout, which is fun, but you gotta be ready for that. But it's not just... With both ladies exhausted as hell, Carolina set up a lazy low kick which would be caught by Molly, and as soon as she would let go, she slowly set up the elbow as she would space out a little, then wind up the power which would land on the upper jaw of the Brazilian. Luana went straight Usman as she would lose control of her entire body and be out for the count. Number 9, Mark Abelardo. MMA casual or not, you've never seen an elbow like this before. Oh, there you go! There you go, he capitalized! He capitalized! My word! Emilio was already in trouble earlier in the fight as he would be up against the cage in trouble eating elbows and combos like a buffet. He would be saved by the bell, but not for too long. Near the beginning of the second round, Mark would get his opponent to follow him to the center of the cage, but this would all end when Mark would fly in with the brutal elbow and have his opponent done. Like Mark actually flew in with his body and elbow at the same time. The angle that this knockout occurred isn't really around. 
Number eight, Marcos Degli. Murder, simply murder. Marcos escaped an onslaught as he would rush away from his opponent, but would later stalk him up against the cage. He started with a low kick, then hopped in with a flying knee, which would also fail, but help in closing the distance. Then he would land a Matt Brown type elbow as it would land on top of his opponent's head, throwing him down to the floor easily. Number 7, Yoel Romero. This knockout is no one's fault, except Melvin Manhoff for taking the fight against Yoel Romero. Before Yoel would evolve into a dog, he unleashed a brutal barrage of elbows right on his downed opponent's face. Though he was fairly dominant, Yoel came with a destruction in round 3 when he was on top of Melvin unleashing the ground and pound. Later, the elbows would be thrown in and have Melvin completely starch on canvas looking like a CPR mannequin. He entered the state of knock the f*** out. Number 6, Chad Hennigan. Solid stiff is the only way to describe Jay Law. After this knockout would take place, check it out. Clinch we talked about hasn't fully been successful so far. Nice elbow! This brutal KO came to us at the Brave CF 66 main event and had the Korean fighter on the ground cheering that the fight was over. It all started with exchanges which would later result in clinching in the center of the cage. Chad would welcome this as he would throw in a knee, but moments later a right elbow to the temple of his opponent. This had Jay Law turn into a stray ballerina as he would be stuck and spinning till he would eventually crash to the canvas. The scarier part is having Jay Law have both of his hands up frozen stiff as he was out cold. Number 5 Marcili Alves this knockout had Carlos Suarez look like a fighter who had a short circuit from impact. O Marcelo não quer saber não, quer vir para a trocação. Lembrando que um dos atletas inicia a luta com um ponto a menos. E vem no cante, e vem no cante. Later, the fight would be ending up against the fence as he would wail on his opponent. Carlos tried to clinch and hold Alves's arm, but this would be a successful fail as he would accidentally let one of his arms escape and then eat a gluten-free elbow to the temple, thus having him lose control over his whole body. Number 4 Calvin Cater The hardest hitting 145 pounder definitely had a taste of his own medicine when he got spoon fed a ruthless elbow. Southpaw, that's when that big left oh! Oh! This finish came in the second round. Both fighters looked really good during the fight, but Calvin was looking amazing in the second round where he would land deadly combos to have the fighter wobbled. About 30 seconds later, Jeremy would meet Calvin near the center and walk into a standing elbow which would drop him. This had Jeremy completely dazed and dropped, but would be finished on the ground and eat another elbow which would turn him into a blood hydrant. Number 3, Gary Goodridge. I mean, now this one has to be one of the best we've ever seen, but is also one of the harder ones to watch. And quickly, Herrera shoots the leg. And Herrera's a very good grappler here. Oh, oh my, elbows in number by Goodridge. And that this fight didn't even last 20 seconds as Paul would try to grapple with Gary, which would end up in him being in a crucifix position. Then Goodridge let his opponent have it. After around the 7,000th elbow, the referee decided the fighter looked deceased enough to where he could call the fight and thus prompt the Canadian fighter the victor. Number 2, Matt Brown. The cops almost arrested Matt Brown after this elbow took place. Oh, it went down at the end, Paul. Yeah, I mean, he catches this kick. It was about the third time, and then he just launches this huge elbow right behind the ear, and Diego is completely out. The same common mistake is what led Diego being flatlined in his bout against Matt. This KO occurred in the first round and was a mistake due to Diego having his kick caught. Lucky enough for Matt, the fighter wasn't walking Buckley, but this had Sanchez vulnerable hopping back towards the cage. Then Matt would land the elbow which would throw Diego face first onto the canvas and out cold. What's even better and scarier is Matt didn't even need to follow up, just stared at his destruction. Number 1 Gaston Bolaños the accuracy and timing in an elbow that was thrown half blind is one of the most oppressive things to occur in a fight. Jones a run for his money. Alexander Flamenco as well. Loves those spinning shots. Oh, and there it is, Jimmy on cue! You know, 
It all occurred near the beginning of the first round when the fight had moved out towards the outskirts of the cage. A high kick from Gaston prompted Rick to respond with a jab. The jab would miss completely as Gaston would already be spinning with his elbow landing right on the chin and throat of his opponent, almost murdering the fighter. And that right there concludes this video. If you made it this far, let us know how we did in the comments below. Alright MMA fans, thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video please give it a like, make sure to hit the notification bell, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Also don't forget to comment below what video you want to see next.